can. We'll talk about it now. We'll probably come to it in the context of the case, but we might as well bring it up now. And that is the SWOG data that was presented in the New England Journal of Medicine last year, you know, showing that, at least in hormone-naive patients, the combination of fulvestrin and anastrozole seems to be better than anastrozole alone. Do people believe that? Do you believe well, that? Well, you know, I'll tell you what that study is a little bit concerning about. <coughs> you know, a well-conducted study, New England Journal of Medicine, and the is 250 milligrams of the fulvestrin with anastrozole versus anastrozole. So the first thing you say, well, there's a survival advantage with the doublet compared to the single agent. So the first thing you say is, well, you know, we really don't know that you've got to give the doublet because we could just give 500 milligrams of the fulvestrin. So I get that. But later it occurred to me that it would, does suggest that one milligram of anastrozole is not your ideal first line treatment. Because that, you know what I mean? So that's, that, I thought, that was what I took away from that, you know? That's a very powerful, that's that's you know? I never thought of it. That's yeah, a very me neither. important thing. Yeah, I mean, so, so we still are still left with, is it 250 plus anastrozole, or is it 500 of fulvestrin by itself, or is it 500 with anastrozole? We still don't know that, but it does sort of imply that one milligram of anastrozole may not be the, the best. I have another study that had the exact same design that showed absolutely no difference between the two arms, and I think that, you know, when you have something like that, a well-designed study, the SWOG trial looked really good, you know, seemed like it was mainly in the patients who were hormone therapy naive. But in an identical trial, and a different patients patient who, population. Yes, so. but the yeah. tamoxifen European, pre I mean, everybody European, had American, higher North American therapy. Therapy. I think we're all, yeah, yeah, in you know, lots trial. of us are If you, <laughs> yeah. if you look at the subset analysis um, in the SWOG study, if you look at those patients who'd received prior tamoxifen, their benefit was not as right. robust. And the and same for the fact study. Sixty percent endocrine therapy naive. Right. Sixty so, percent. Yeah, I know there's been some discussion about combining the two studies and doing a joint analysis. Not, but, not uh, a bad thought. But what would you do? I mean, I, I'll give you an example. A patient right on my practice order. I saw her today before he came. So she's 60. She had endocrine, she had chemo and endocrine therapy, probably tamoxifen for five years. It's now seven years later. She presents with bone mets. Did you treat her just with fulvestrin or the combination? Did she receive tamoxifen? She got tamoxifen mm -hmm. in the adjuvant setting, but it yeah. was seven years ago. How old is she? 60. <laughs> I'm not big on the combination in that So you're setting. not big on the combination. And uh, I've used it occasionally in the de novo metastatic, but you know now I think the problem is if you give the drugs together and you're not sold on it, then they might not be eligible for the next clinical trial that you have. <laughs> so, I, uh, and I, so unless I really believed that, I mean, I think the issue is do you really believe patients are going to live longer if they get the combination versus sequential therapy? And I think with 500 of fulvestrin as our fulvestrin dose, I don't really believe that we can be sure that that's the case. I think ba based on the current data, the standard would be the 500 uh, milligram dose of fulvestrin instead of using the combination. Uh, and if I may, this is something that will be looked at in the new adjuvant setting. And I know there are some issues related to the data of endocrine therapy in the new adjuvant setting because of the length it may take to uh, look for a response. But there will, there will be a trial within the alliance called the alternate trial that will be looking at single agent versus the combination. With yes. the 500 milligram loading dose, yes. and because yes. that's standard smart. Standard in in practice now, yes. now, if you're going to use a doublet yes. in your de novo patient, are you using the 500 mm. milligram yes. dose of fulvestrin? Yes. That's yeah, what no, I'm I doing. For everybody yeah. yeah. And I, I also want to give a shout out to those um, often ignored men with uh, breast cancer, that is ER positive mm. and often uh, tamoxifen refractory. Uh, I actually can just say we'll probably never see a trial. Um, yeah. <coughs> but anecdotally, uh, I have a few men who have uh, I've chosen to use AI fulvestrin with and had very impressive results. They have good responses uh, to uh, fulvestrin too, in general. To follow up on this, because of the lack of prospective uh, trial in men, there is a, actually a, a global registry that is ongoing actually, and, uh, and more than a thousand men have already been entered into this registry. So we will have some data yeah. related to outcomes. Oh, that's great. So let's let's move on. This is great discussion. You see, just, just but we don't think just to finish that yeah. this section that fulvestrin is the uh, necessarily the right first line choice. I mean, I to me, I would probably start an AI first because just because it's a pill. But you know, we need to uh, confirm the but first trial. But that's a very but what Joyce brings up is a very worrying point. You know that yes, we all would give AI first line <laughs> and then go to fulvestrin second. But isn't AI the really the Change right my thing? Practice. Yeah. That's really I'm using it first line now. And then and so five hundred is really my more my first line. For the sixty percent like in the SWOG trial, 
I'm throwing in an AI, you know, even though that really isn't what the study looked at. You know, it looked at a, at a lower dose, but I am, I mean, they don't come up that often. But um, now, the, you know, the question is, um, is the SWOG trial, uh, you know, relevant for a choice of letrozole? You know, for example, because the curve split for survival and then the crossover eradicated that survival advantage, you know? Because, you know, survival we don't get very much, as you pointed out, uh, Andy, in the past. But um, so I actually think that... Or it could um, be due to chance or imbalances in prognostic right. factors that aren't Because like the phase uh, three of uh, pal palbosiclib, you know, the uh, CDK46 inhibitor. That was great that you pronounced it right. I can't believe that. That was that. fabulous. <laughs> you get a gold star um, for pronouncing but it. But <laughs> you I probably, never yeah. pronounced that. I, I saw it's uh, a CDK4 inhibitor. But, you know, the standard arm there is um, full best, I mean, is a uh, letrozole, right. which I think is perfectly fine. But it does, I just I just point that out from the uh, from the swag about just single agent and astrozole. And I think all of us would probably enroll in a trial first before we would say that you should give one hormone treatment versus Correct. another. And, the palbociclib trial is very easy to enroll in because it's just letrozole and placebo or letrozole plus the oral agent for three out of every four weeks.